the supporters of channel member Will Johnson. Well, we made it to January and almost all of our loans got recalled because we weren't using very many of them. So I signed even more than we had before. Hello and welcome to part 95 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in League 2. We're away against Crawley, we're at home against Doncaster, and we're going to have to try a new tactic because since you were last with me, things have gone a little bit wrong. Over the course of January, we gradually had all of our lone players recalled, and as you can see, without them... We, we did struggle a smidgen. Six games without a win. Um, we did manage to get three draws in the middle of all that, but six games without a win is a long way from ideal. And uh, we weren't really able to bring in any new loans for free until deadline day. We kind of had to wait until deadline day happened. But when deadline day did happen, goodness me, did we bring in a few of them. The highlight would be Kyle Bailey, who's returned, having been part of our team for the first half of the season, went back to Sheffield United, and we've got him back again. So we've got him for the rest of the season. The rest of them are very much a mixed bag. If we have a look at the uh, the current abilities on the squad, obviously Bailey is great. Um, and there are a couple of other standout ones that look like they could be pretty good. Ryan Riley, uh, Justin Piper. Um, of course, Rawlinson was already here. And then a bunch of squad players to give us some squad depth but um i don't know we need to we need to sort ourselves out so we are going to move away from the 4231 and to the 424 that i've threatened multiple times even tried in an episode before and it didn't go so great but i think needs must we need to change our tactic and change it we are and one of the things we're also changing is our goalkeeper daniel baxter who's in on loan until the end of the season from Barnsley, just like the rest of them, is a natural sweeper keeper. We're going sweeper keeper, boys and girls. It's like when Arsenal binned off Ramsdale, even though he was not really doing anything wrong. Perini has been fine. I mean, he has conceded 59 goals already this season and only kept four clean sheets. Um, but he can't do the, the sweeper keeper stuff. So we needed a sweeper keeper. Now we have one. Baxter's in. Um, and other than that, as far as new boys in the team go, the only other one who's going to be starting today is Jack Roberts on the right-hand side. And uh, he's just got the flexibility to play just about everywhere. And I feel like he's going to be someone who we're going to use a lot. He's played nine games in League One this season, including scoring a goal in League One as well. So quite excited about him. So the full 11 is new boy Baxter on his debut in goal. A back four of Bartiromo, Yoshihama, McGinn and D'Souza. Bailey and Murray in midfield. Scanlon and Roberts as the wingers. And then Rawlingson and Muller up front together. A 20-goal partnership between those two, um, even though they've not really been a partnership at any point. 20 goals between them when they've started as the lone striker individually. Fingers crossed they can form a partnership. We've seen little snippets of it in episodes um, where we've played them together and they have linked up reasonably well. They're very different kinds of striker. And hopefully we can get a tune out of the two of them playing together. Uh, Bailey plays it into Roberts. Roberts shoots from range. If Roberts had scored inside five minutes, I'd have looked like an absolute genius for bringing him straight into the team. But alas, was not to be. Okay, I think the neighbours have uh, stopped talking directly outside my window now so we can carry on with the video. I'm having to whisper just in case they are still there. I'm not being mean if they are. Just they don't need to be in the video. I think that's I think that's fair enough. Um, so still nil nil as we make it halfway through this first half. We have had the better of the chances, but that is a low bar. Neither team really showering themselves in glory today. Crawley up in mid table. I'm probably be pretty disappointed at how poorly they've played at home against a team in rotten form. That I mean, we haven't made enormous changes from what we've been doing recently. We've changed the tactic a bit and we've changed the goalkeeper, but they're really struggling to get any kind of attack going. And I guess that's for the best. Although if they score here right in the stroke of half time, it's all for nothing. I hate this game sometimes. I really do. It's the first highlight of the entire match and it's just such a nothing goal. This is the potential problem we're going to have with Baxter. He's only six feet tall, which as we've discussed before, makes him very small. He is a tiny man, only six feet tall, um, well below an acceptable height for a male human. Six foot two is the correct height for somebody to be. We've talked about that before. And uh, he's below it. And that's not ideal. We might have to come away from Gagan Press entirely if this, isn't, if this doesn't turn things around. And, uh, have we been found out? 
obviously, I think we've probably, and this is a dangerous thing to say, we haven't. I was going to say, I thought we maybe already had enough points to be safe anyway. We are 11 points clear of Kettering in the relegation zone. Thankfully, only two teams getting relegated. It does mean you have to be pretty awful to be relegated out of this league. So I guess in the grand scheme of things, survival of any kind this season is a massive overachievement and something for us to build on. But uh, I remember having hopes of potentially getting to the playoffs. They're long gone. We are very much in survival mode now. Um, right, we don't have any new strikers that are up on the bench, at least. Um, Henderson Derbyshire, six foot three. Hmm. A complete forward. No, that's a terrible idea. But we will play him as a target forward. We've got wingers on. Let's play him as a target forward. Let's get Kelleher on as well and see if having a big boy up top with Rawlinson there doing a lot of running. In fact, let's put Rawlinson on an attacking instruction, have him doing a lot of running around. I mean, Rawlinson's not small either. Rawlinson, six foot six. <laughs> so we've got two very big boys on there. Um, you'd think we'd be quite the aerial threat. Um, can we can we do a goal? That would be nice if we, if we could do a goal. That'd be lovely. So McGinn plays it forward to Bailey and then Kelleher to Shibu playing at right back today. Kelleher bursting forward. Keith Kelleher. We've just got to start starting him a bit more often. The problem with starting him more often, and I've talked about it before, is every time he starts a game, he gets injured. He comes off the bench and changes games. If we start him, he invariably doesn't finish matches. His natural fitness is pathetic. But I guess that's why he's with us. If he could keep himself fit, he'd be playing at a higher level. He's definitely got the talent to come on and change games. It's just we have to very, very carefully manage him because of the fact that he's basically made of glass. Right, we're going to bring on McCormack to play on the uh, on the left-hand side. I'm tempted to switch back to this. I hope the game doesn't get upset by me doing it. But, I mean, even that, it doesn't really work. If we make him an inside forward on that side, that that seems okay. Suits the personnel that we've got on better than trying to play with a front two when we don't have two strikers on. Sticking McCormack out onto the wing when he can't really play out on the wing. We'd be very happy with a draw today. I mean, it's been a long time since we've had since we've had a point. Of, obviously, a win would be even better. We've only won once this calendar year, and it's mid February, so we could we could very much cope with a victory. We've got a long throw, hopefully being hurled in towards Rawlingson here. Although Butter almost taking his time with it, Henderson Derbyshire turns, plays it across. Keller is there again. Oh, he couldn't quite keep his head down. Why is it him who gets on the end of it when it could have been Rawlingson? I mean, Rawlingson just nods that down and scores, but uh, it wasn't to be. We we very much take a 1-1 one, one away from home against a team who are higher than us in the league, and almost everybody is higher than us in the league. So we take the draw. We build on it, hopefully, in the next match. Um, are we at home in our next match? We are. Home against a Doncaster team who are below us, or were below us. They're now just above us. That is a must-win game. So let's go and win it. Well, so much for Daniel Baxter being the answer in goal. He's immediately got himself injured after one match, so Perini's coming back in. I think I'm just going to play him as the sweeper-keeper. And uh, if it doesn't work, blame Baxter and then send him back whence he came. Uh, Keller has going to come in and start. Watch him get injured. You know the script. He's going to come up. He's going to get injured because he can't start matches. Um, but we're going to we're going to try. I mean, he's just so effective. And average rate, rating-wise, he's been our highest average rated player this season. So it seems so wasteful not to start him. But he just doesn't play complete 90 minutes is, is, is ever. Um, we'll leave Rawlingson as a pressing forward in there. Give another of the uh, youngsters, a young striker is in on loan. He can have a squad number. And this is must win. We said before it's must win. We must win it. Doncaster just above us. If we lose to Doncaster, we very much become part of a breakaway bottom five rather than this lower mid-table group that Doncaster would have become part of. Whereas a win here sucks Doncaster back in below us and keeps us in touch with the four or five teams above us as well. So it's massively important that we pick up a victory. We don't want to be one of the, oh, it'll be uh, any two from these five. We don't want to be that team. We want to be the team that's boring and in mid-table so we can just go straight through to the last two matches of the season in the next episode and not worry about it. Um, there's nothing happening. There's not been a highlight. 
it's, I guess, a positive, although as we saw in the last game, um, it's not necessarily a positive because the first highlight of the game could well be Doncaster on the attack. It's actually us, and it's going to be Bailey with a free kick, getting it in the area where the... He's not. He's given it to Muller. I thought it was going into the area for the big boys, but we've done a shenanigans free kick, and Wally Muller has scored for us. 1-0. Lovely stuff. That I taught him to do that on the training pitch this week. I'm taking full credit for it. Lovely work from Bailey. And then nobody's marking Muller. We've had it happen to us so many times in this save. It is so satisfying to have it start to happen to us every now and again. And you can see the impact it has on the league table as well. Um, it puts us all the way up to, what was that, 18th? Puts Doncaster back below us, keeps us well in the mix um, of the mid-table teams, well away from relegation. We don't need to win too many more teams, too many more matches this season to be able to consider ourselves safe. I think we said at the start of the season, 45 points is what we were looking at, and that would be safety. This gets us awfully close, and Rawlingson has got himself a goal as well, and it's an absolute screamer. It says 25 yards out down in the, uh, down in the commentary. It looked further than that to me. Let's have a look at it from the other angle. Scanlon playing it across to Bailey, who's been instrumental in both goals. Rawlinson, OK, he's not quite as far out as I thought he was, but he's bent it round the defender into that bottom corner. It's 2-0. Just don't balls it up from here, lads. The aliens are in. They're ready to celebrate. Um, I think we've got it clear, um, but only as far as that guy on the edge of the area, and we have immediately balls it up and let them back into it. It's an immediate reply. It's another long-range effort. There's been a lot of them today from both teams. Don't want to see your filthy replay. Look at that league table. 42 points this puts us on. Effectively, as far as I'm concerned, a win here means we just need to win one more game with 10 matches to go, which the form we're in, we might be able to just about manage. But it would leave us so very many points. Too many points to Kev maths it, clear of the relegation zone. And this this feels like securing safety today if we pick up this win so let's not mess it up hey eh? is that too much to ask right kelleher before he gets injured let's take him off scanlon can come off for the youngster daveron who we gave a squad number two before murray can come off for shibu and uh, we don't need to change anything else around them just freshen the legs up for the players who are starting to tire a little bit very important when you're doing a gagan press it's why it's so important well that we've got all these youngsters in such a deep squad of players because we can just keep everybody fresh. If people get tired, we can send them on holiday. If they're tired in match, we can substitute them off. We've got a lot of like for like two star current ability, five star potential 18, 19 year olds that we can just use interchangeably. That was lovely work from Rawlingson trying to release Muller. Um, unfortunately, he can't. And they've, I mean, that is a very cynical tackle from McGinn. He's got himself sent off. And I think he probably needed to, but it does leave us in a little bit of a pickle. The guy was through, but a long way from goal. So you could argue there was probably time to recover. But I guess it's for the best that he brought him down and saved us in the moment. Now, what do we do? I guess we take off one of the strikers. Muller's the obvious one to come off, I think. Um, bring on Wiles for him and just go to the one striker. Rawlinson's going to have to do all the running on his own. And we drop Wiles in there and hope that we can hang on for 20 minutes down to 10 men, which is a tall order. Can we make any more changes? What else have we got? McCormack and Henderson Derbyshire. Bailey's the one who's tiring. Neither of them can really come on for him. So I guess we leave things as they are. Unless we absolutely need to make a change. I mean, McCormack at a push could come on for Bailey and maybe play of us a slightly further forward. It's so what we'd do if Doncaster equalised for sure, just so we had a little bit more linking up the midfield in the attack. But I think in the circumstances, Bailey's our best player. Let's keep him on the pitch for as long as we possibly can. Um, right, Daveren on his debut today hasn't looked out of place since he's come on on that left-hand side, plays it into Bartiromo, gives it to Rawlingson, and he should have scored. It's a good save from their keeper, apparently. It looked like a miss to me. It must have been fingertips, but Daverin's going to come over to take. Can we have a goal here, boys? It would be very, very helpful for us to go 3-1 up so I can stop stressing. 3-1 three, three, one up here, we're safe. I'm convinced of it. Right, Roberts chasing all the way back, turns past his defender. He's full of energy. Just get the cross back in. 
Why are you not crossing? You've got a big guy in the middle. Cross for him. Shaibu. Out to Davran. Misses him, though. And now the counter-attack is on because the fullback was forward. And it's two on two. They've just got to hit the guy in the middle. Luckily, Wiles is there to intercept Bailey. Just touching it onto Roberts. And we've done really well to retain possession there. We look like a proper football team for a moment there. And Roberts just goes past his man again. He is full of running. Rawlinson has got Davran in enormous amount of space on the left. Just run it to the corner. Can you keep it there for five? Five minutes? Why not? Oh, he's crossing it. Roberts can't get on the end of it with his head. And now it's the counter-attack again. As once again, we've committed men forward. But Yoshihama, such a comfortable defender, um, just has it covered. And now Roberts is going to skin his man again. I tell you what, it was the Keller her loving in the last match. Roberts has come on in this one and looks so lively. Um, Shaibu into Dav Davran, who also looks very lively on the left, and he scored. It must be an own goal. It is an own goal off of the Doncaster defender. It's an absolute calamity for them. But these two wingers who've come on in the second half here have had to do a lot of running. We were down to 10 men, and they've looked very, very comfortable doing it. And one of them has just forced the winner. And that's a safe, I think. I think we're safe. What is that, 14 points clear of relegation with 10 matches to go? It has to be not only a spectacular collapse, but a proper phoenix from the ashes for one of those bottom uh, bottom two teams for us to go down. And I just can't see both of those things happening after the season we've had. I think we're going to be safe. We rebuild in the summer and I'll see you in the next episode for the final couple of matches when we should be properly mathematically securing survival in this league and trying to come up with a plan for next year the plan for next year very much involves having a cup run because i think until we have that cup run and get the money for it we're never really going to be able to progress beyond where we are now where we have like 10 permanent players and a bunch of loans that just rotate in and out and we just tread water with it perini made a save um i mean we have got five minutes of added time here i'm talking as if the job is already done Doncaster, meanwhile, with the extra man, are still attacking. And if they score here, it's going to be a very stressful last four minutes of the match. But luckily, their, their header from the corner misses completely. And I think we should be OK. Wiles plays it forward to D'Souza. D'Souza to Roberts, who's skinned this left back multiple times and wants to do it again. But instead plays a terrible pass to Daverin and gives the ball away. And uh, Yoshihama is is ran past this time. And there you have it. This is going to be the stressful last few minutes because it's 3-2. Still three minutes of added time to go. Don't balls it up from here, you numbskulls. I think we've probably we've probably done it. We have done it. Oy, 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 harder than it needed to be. But that is a huge result. Um, there you go. We end a seven-match winless run. And that's what the league table looks like. I think we are all but mathematically safe in that position. If we get relegated from here, I deserve to be sacked for it. So let the board know. We ain't getting sacked this season. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.